When Lincoln Purse goes to work at his home each day, the routine couldn't be much simpler. The walk from the kitchen to his office takes about five seconds. Then he sits down, picks up a pen, and starts to write or draw. Since 1991, Purse has been turning out a daily comic strip called Big Nate. It appears online and in more than 400 newspapers around the world. It's about the everyday life of an 11-year-old boy and Purse knows the territory. When he got out of college, he worked for three years as a teacher. Now he's got a new book out for young readers called Max and the Midnights. It's his first book that isn't about Big Nate, so we sat down to talk about kids and storytelling. When you look back now, do you say, thank heaven that I was a teacher for a few years because it really gave me an insight into young people that I otherwise would not have? I enjoyed it. There's no doubt I enjoyed it. I, I was teaching kids high school boys who were older than the kids that I write about, but they weren't necessarily all, even though they were in high school, I wouldn't say they were all that more mature than your typical middle schooler. And your own memories of middle school, are they still vivid to oh, you? Oh, wicked. Yeah, definitely. Big Nate has been an 11 year old in sixth grade for going on 28 years yes. now? Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Did you ever imagine in your wildest flights of fancy when you started writing it in 1991 that the strip would keep going this long? Oh, I hoped. You know, newspapers obviously have their struggles these days, but people still want their comics. People love comics, so they'll find them online. And I think there's always going to be an audience for sort of the traditional daily comic strip. You've been writing the daily comic strip since 1991. You've done eight Big Nate books. Yeah, I did. I wrote eight Big Nate novel. I call them hybrid books. We, we're trying to figure out what to call these books because they're really not graphic novels. It's a little pathetic that you did eight of them, and as I understand it, the series has come to an end and you still don't know what to call them. <laughs> I know, that is sad. <laughs> You're now going in a fresh direction. You've got a new book out called yes. Max and the Midnights. What was the spark of inspiration? There were a lot of sparks. I think maybe the first spark was when I was a really little kid. Did you, did you watch Looney Tunes? Yes. Yeah, so there's a, there's a Daffy Duck cartoon where he is, they're spoofing Robin Hood. Look no further, good friar, for I am he for whom thou seekest. I am Robin Hood. Oh, uh, kid, uh, cut it out. I'm, I'm serious. If you don't know where he is, just say so. But honest and truly, I am Robin Hood. Sure you are. That was the first time that Robin Hood was kind of on my radar screen. And then soon after that, probably watching Channel 8 one afternoon or something, I saw the old Errol Flynn Robin Hood that I think... Which is great. Which is a fabulous movie. So I sort of got interested in these sort of like middle age adventure tales. Purse realized there was a lot of comic potential in spoofing this classic genre, and he had his idea for Max and the Midnights. You know, for many years I've been writing about this sixth grade kid, and he is pretty much locked into this school setting. And I thought, I wanna, I wanna tell an adventure story where this character and some other supporting characters are kind of on a road, a road trip, like a quest. What he ended up creating was a story about Max, an apprentice troubadour who wants to be a knight. One of the best pieces of writing advice of all time is leave out the boring parts that readers tend to skip. I would think that's especially <laughs> crucial when you're writing for readers age 8 to 12. A really important lesson for me is show not tell because I think your average kid would rather see someone get hit in the face with a pie than read about it. You do all the illustration by hand yourself? I do. Which is not necessarily the standard. People may not realize this, but a lot of comic strips are not drawn by their creators by hand. It's true. Purse does not have an assistant who can draw his characters and doesn't use technology to create certain images. It's not a perfect system, but it's the one that works for him. Usually the mistake isn't bad enough, hopefully it's not, that you have to really start over. In his studio at home, Purse is already working on another book about Max. Now, I thought when I started this book it would be a one-off. I just wanted to sort of take a breather. I didn't necessarily want to do a whole nother series of books. So I said, I'll just tell a standalone adventure story. But while I was working on it, I thought, I really like these characters. I could definitely tell more stories with these characters. So I think that's what I'm going to do. 
very cool guy, and I love people who are in that line of work. It makes me envious. I'd, I'd love to do that. Although, he's, he was candid and said that after 27 years of doing Big Nate, it's not as easy to come up with ideas for I'm the sure. strip every day as it used to be. I'm sure you start running out of things. It, it is very impressive, though, to be the writer and the the illustrator mm -hmm. of things like that. Right, yeah. and, and as he said, you know, a lot of other big names in the comic strip business, they have assistants who do mm -hmm. the work. Lincoln Purse does it himself. Now, Lincoln was supposed to have a book signing event tomorrow at Print and Bookstore in Portland. Because of the snowstorm, I think that is still iffy. So call the bookstore, Print the Bookstore in Portland, to see if Lincoln Purse will be there tomorrow night for his book event. If the storm postpones it, then presumably he'll be back another time. Yeah, always good to double check.